Salutations from space, friends. This is Gemini Brett here with a short excerpt from a longer talk um, that you can see in full at my website, GeminiBrett.com. The talk is called The Turning of the Ages and the Sun on the Cross. I want to show you a short excerpt from this presentation, which addresses the very real astronomy of the tropical zodiac. Now, part of the challenge here is that there are at least three popular philosophies of what the zodiac is. Uh, and thanks to my beloved Scorpiana for helping me create this illustration to show the three. It's a lot to see, and so I'm going to strip it down. The astronomer zodiac is the constellational zodiac. So this yellow circle here is what's called the ecliptic. It's the orbital plane that the Earth describes as we orbit the sun every year. But of course, from Earth's point of view, that plane is witnessed by the sun's annual travel about us. If you extend that plane towards infinity, you encounter the constellations of the zodiac. So from Earth's point of view, the sun is always held by one of these 12 star groups. Now, that being said, you can never see what constellations the sun's aligned to because the sun rises to illuminate the earth, but it, of course, hides the sky. We can see the ecliptic because, for the most part, our solar system is relatively flat. And so you can witness the other wanderers, the moon and the planets, according to their own periodicity, dancing through these 12 star groups, the zodiacal constellations, which are the 12 star groups that embrace the ecliptic plane. And this is the astronomer's view of what the zodiac is. And sadly, it's the view of many astrologers today too, that the signs are the constellations. Now, one of the principal claims the rationalists stake in their attempts to prove astrology fake is that you can never have a 12 equal sign zodiac because the constellations do not in any way divide the ecliptic circle into 12 equal slices of 30 degrees. I mean, and this claim is true. It just does not in any way debunk the idea of a 12 equal sign zodiac. So for example, this constellation Virgo, which I prefer to call priestess, to differentiate signs and constellations, which are totally different things. The priestess describes about 46 degrees of ecliptic arc, right? 12 signs, equal signs are 30 degrees each. So the priestess is like a sign and a half plus a little bit. While the mighty ram over here is only like 15 degrees of ecliptic arc. So the constellational zodiac absolutely shows that the constellations vary significantly in size. Okay, the next zodiac that we'll look at is the sidereal zodiac. Sidereal means of the stars. And like the astronomer's constellational zodiac, it is configured to the heavens. Here I'm depicting the 12 equal 30 degree signs of the sidereal zodiac with the purple divisions and the written words for the 12 signs on the outer purple ring. So you'll see Sagittarius 30 degrees, the same size as sidereal Scorpio, even though sidereal Scorpio features much of the Scorpion constellation, but also some of the scales Sidereal Libra, most of the scales, but a whole bunch of the priestess too. So it's a common misconception by sidereal astrologers of the star astrologers. And there's a Western sidereal tradition, but for the most part, the sidereal zodiac is employed by Eastern astrologers, by Joydish astrologers, often known as Vedic astrologers, mostly in India. There's a common misconception that that sidereal zodiac is the constellational zodiac. And it's not true. In fact, the most popular sidereal zodiacs of our day and age are calibrated in such a way 
that's zero degrees sidereal Aries is opposite to this star. In other words, zero degrees sidereal Libra is calibrated in such a way that it begins with Spica or Spica or Chitra, many names for this alpha star of the priestess constellation, right? But look at that, that constellation the astronomers call Virgo, right? It's the brightest star of Virgo that is zero degrees sidereal Libra. So certainly the sidereal equal sign zodiac cannot be aligned to the constellations of the ecliptic plane since they vary significantly in size. And we don't need any more proof that the two sidereal and constellational zodiacs are not the same than to see that sidereal zero degrees Libra is configured to the brightest star of the Virgo constellation. And if that's not confusing enough, let's look at the tropical zodiac where Spica is currently in our day and age aligned to 24 degrees tropical Libra. So here now the tropical zodiac shown with the glyphs that we use to depict the astrological signs in our day and age. Why? Because I'm convinced that these glyphs all speak about tropical astronomy, which is based upon the plane of Earth's spin, our daily motion, and the plane of our annual motion, our orbit. Right. I mean, even look at the Sagittarius glyph. <laughs> Can you see the spin axis, which is tilted to the orbital plane? It's right there. OK, anyway, this is tropical Libra in our day and age. I'm recording this on December 6, 2020. Um, and there's no scales anywhere nearby. Right. It's all priestess and it's tropical Scorpio that has the scales and some priestess feet. It's tropical Sagittarius where the scorpion lives. In fact, this so-called royal star, Antares, the heart of the scorpion in our day and age projects to 10 degrees tropical Sagittarius. And so, I mean, you can see why people would say, well, the tropical signs are just totally ar arbitrary. Like it's scorpion in the sky is Scorpio. So why would you call that Sagittarius? Good question. And also, why would you divide the ecliptic into 12 equal 30 degree slices when the constellations do that? And the answer, at least from tropical point of view, is that the tropical zodiac is not about out there, friends. It's not about the heavens. It's not about the constellations. And we could say in our history, well, that came first, the Babylonians divided the ecliptic into 12 equal slices. And there was a day and age when they were all aligned perfectly. And that was like the time of Ptolemy. This is a very common misconception taught by astrologers today. The sidereal and tropical zodiacs aligned in like 285 AD. Ptolemy was around like, you know, 400 years before that. So this changes with precession of the equinoxes. It's something I'm not gonna get into so much today, but I encourage you to watch the longer presentation, which is called The Sun on the Cross and the Turning of the Ages, which you can find at my website, geminibrett.com on the offerings page, along with a lot of other free teachings, including one that's the very real astronomy of the tropical zodiac. Um, but so here's the deal, as Earth's rotational axis through what's called the tertiary motion, the third motion of Earth, the first is Earth's daily spin, the second is Earth's annual orbit, but the tertiary motion is Earth's rotational axis, which defines the directions slowly reorienting itself as to where it points in the heavens over a course of about 26,000 years. And that tertiary motion realigns the tropical zodiac and its cardinal points to the heavens above, to the constellational zodiac, 
which is aligned to the heavenly happenings, and the sidereal zodiac, which also is, again, the difference between constellational and sidereal is that constellational are these not equal constellations that embrace the ecliptic plane, while the sidereal signs are 12 equal divisions based upon a star and will always be aligned and calibrated to that star. This is not true for the tropical zodiac, which as you can see here, is aligned to the cardinal directions of Earth. So I want to show you that. Um, so importantly, here we are in 2020 AD. This changes with time. I mean, very slowly in about, oh, 400 plus years in 2440 AD about, precession will have shifted Earth's axis through the heavens in such a way that the southern axis is now leaning to the cusp of sidereal Scorpio and Sagittarius. And at that time, all of tropical Sagittarius will equal all of sidereal Scorpio. At that time, whereas now in 2020, we're about 24 degrees off between the tropical and the sidereal. At that time, around 2440 AD, we will be completely 30 degrees off. So at that time, tropical Sagittarius will equal sidereal Scorpio and tropical Pisces will equal sidereal Aquarius. This would be one image, by the way, for the so-called dawning of the age of Aquarius, which is when the east point zero degrees tropical Aries, the cusp of tropical Pisces and Aries precesses into the sidereal sign of Aquarius. And there's many other different criterion we could apply astronomically to suggest when this turning of the ages is. And of course, that is the journey that this presentation, the sun on the cross and the turning of the ages is devoted to. So again, I'll direct your attention to GeminiBrett.com to watch that movie in full if you would like. So the question is, what is the tropical zodiac? And this, and it's very real, elegant and beautiful astronomy. It's in no way arbitrary. Let me break it down for you. Okay, so the Earth. Again, the Earth's first motion, the primary motion. What is your primary astronomical experience? It's day and night. You only have to live for 24 hours time to experience this profound cycle of yin and yang. And one image of correspondences or the truth of astrology would be that astronomical cycles contribute to our energetic experience as earthlings. We don't have to go beyond the rotation of earth, the daily 24 hour spin of earth to see some correspondence here because you feel very different at 3 a.m. than you do at 3 p.m. The flowers open to receive the light and close at night to dream and rest and our bodies are configured to do the same, right? primary motion, the spinning of the earth. And this pole, this axis of the earth's rotation emanates from the heart of earth and then passes through the terrestrial poles, south pole and Santa's home at the north pole. And then it points in space to the places called the north and south celestial poles. In our day and age, and this will change with precession, in our day and age, that North Celestial Pole is very closely configured to Alpha Ursa Minor, a star we now call Polaris, Pole Star, or North Star. And it won't hold those titles for long because precession over this long, about 26,000 year cycle will reorientate where Earth's Northern Pole points in space. Very importantly, this is not magnetic north and south. This is true north and south, which is 100% defined by, as I like to say, Gaia's spine or the world tree, the rotational axis of our planet, the axis of our daily or primary motion, whose plane is the celestial equator. It's simply Earth's equator projected out into space. So if you think of the 
axis of the rotation as like the axle of the wheel, the celestial equator would be like where the rubber meets the road, right? It's like the rotational plane of this daily motion, the celestial equator, which I'm fond of calling the circle of matter because though Earth's daily spin brings us such hits as sunrise and sunset, it's really a motion that's entirely about the Earth, which here I'm calling matter. And I like to use blue to describe this earthly plane, this plane of Earth's daily rotation. And I like to use yellow to depict the other plane that is essential to the very real astronomy of the tropical zodiac. And that is the plane of our secondary motion, Earth's annual orbit about the sun. Again, from a geocentric or Earth-centered experience, which is our experience of the heavens because we live on Earth, we experience that secondary motion, that annual orbit of the Earth about the sun the, on the ecliptic plane by witnessing the sun move about us in a year. And this is why I like to call the ecliptic plane the circle of spirit because it's where the sun lives. And so every year the sun will get around that ecliptic plane. I stop here at a very important part of the zodiac. So importantly, the tropical astronomy is completely based upon these two planes. One, Earth's rotational plane, two, Earth's orbital plane, the planes of primary and secondary motion, the equator and the ecliptic, which diverge by an angle of about 23 and a half degrees, the so-called tilt angle of Earth. And those divergences are at the solstice points while the two places where these two planes intersect, the nodes of the Earth-Sun relationship are the equinox points. So in the tropical zodiac, that's zero degrees tropical Aries, zero degrees tropical Libra, and the places of maximum about 23 and a half degrees divergence are the solstice points, zero degrees tropical Cancer and zero degrees tropical Capricorn. These are four entirely real, in no way arbitrary astronomical points based upon Earth astronomy, the astronomy of Earth's daily and yearly motions. Now, the claim would be what's arbitrary here is assigning these names Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn. And also, how do we get from these very four, you know, real astronomical points to 12 signs, right? <laughs> And some of that would be based perhaps on the 12 moons per year, right? New moon to new moon, a lunation, but there's actually 12.369, not 12 lunations on average. You could look about the moon going around the earth, which is a different kind of month, a sidereal month. And there's 13.368 of those, right? So I think in our sister traditions of musical harmony, of sacred geometry, we can see the power of the 12-ness. I, I like to say creation creates in 12s, in a sense, a story for another time. But let me at least show you, without a shadow of doubt, I hope, that the cardinal cusps of the tropical zodiacs are in no way arbitrarily defined and are aligned to the cardinal directions of Earth. We can also think of the tropical zodiac as the solar serpent. And this comes down to an astronomical thing called declination, okay? Declination is the angular measurement of a celestial body or point in space, either north or south of the celestial equator, of the plane of Earth's daily rotation, yeah? So, for example, tropical Gemini is well north of Earth's equator, which you can see here 
and this little uh, sine wave graph, right? Where we're gonna find zero declination at the equinox points and then maximum divergence from zero declination, which is the celestial equator at the solstice points, 23 and a half degrees north about at zero degrees tropical Cancer and south at zero degrees tropical Capricorn. Okay, so this point here where I'm showing the sun in the image, and I just got a little bit late in my graphic, has a declination of just about zero, well, at zero degrees is the zero Aries point because that's one of the points, again, where the plane of the year, the ecliptic, crosses the plane of the day, the equator, right? So, of course, on the equator, zero degrees declination since it's defined by angular measurement north or south of the equator, so that's zero. And then as we move through the year, Earth orbiting Sun, or our experience of that orbital yearly motion, Sun moving about us, we see the Sun climbing in northern declination through the tropical signs of Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, which have northern declination increasing north until we get to the northernmost point of the tropical zodiac, the Sun's northernmost declination which is when the sun ingresses tropical cancer. The north point, why would I say that? Well, it's gonna be easier to show you that if I turn this whole thing <laughs> as we are used to seeing the globes, you know, tilted to show this tilt of Earth's spin axis to her rotational axis. And again, I see a lot of Sagittarius glyph in that. Well, the northern axis of Earth, or the northern pole of Earth, leans in every moment forever and ever and ever towards zero degrees tropical cancer. It's very important, right? It is literally the directions of Earth, which are defined by Earth's spine, her rotational axis, projected to the plane of Earth's orbital motion. Can we do that? Sure. I can walk towards North Star tonight from the Bay Area. And if I walk long enough, I'll reach Seattle, right? It doesn't mean I'm flying up and levitating towards the North Star in the sky. I'm projecting that Northern celestial pole down to my local horizon. And that defines my horizon North. In the same way, I can say that there is a North point of the ecliptic plane. And it is the point that in tropical astrology, irregardless of what constellation this is aligned to, it is the point where we define as zero degrees tropical cancer, a cardinal cusp. It's the north cardinal direction on the ecliptic plane. Now, this is June solstice right? Summer solstice in the northern hemisphere, maximum light because that's when we are northern lean towards the sun, and winter solstice in the southern hemisphere, right? I could call it northern solstice. Solstice, which means the sun stops. The sun stops doing what? The sun stops moving north by declination and then begins moving back to the south. One of our many experiences of that on Earth is in the Northern Hemisphere on June solstice, the sun has found its maximum mid midday height. And then it starts coming back down for six months. That's the Gemini glyph, up and down. The Cancer glyph is north and south. And it's one thing that we experience if you watch the sun rising on the eastern horizon or setting on the western horizon every day of the year, you will find that it does not set or rise in the same place. At the time of June solstice, whether you're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, the sun rises furthest north on the eastern horizon and sets furthest north on the western horizon. And then like a crab, which walks sideways, the sun stops and turns around and then moves south for six months on the horizons, where at solstice, it stops and turns around and comes back north. That's the Cancer Glyph. The sun does it every year, the moon does it every month, because the signs 
live in these places. The Zodiac does it every day. And I'm getting a little bit further past what I need to share here today. But very importantly, the reason why I would suggest cancer is associated with crabs has nothing to do with this constellation that doesn't really look like a crab anyway, but rather has to do with the crab-like sideways motion of the sun's yearly dance on the horizons, the crabs who walk sideways just as the tidal zones where they live, <laughs> the waves walking sideways, right? This is cancer. Now, very importantly, when the sun ingresses tropical cancer, finding its most northerly declination of the year, when the sun ingresses tropical cancer, it is shining at the zenith on an earthly location at the tropic of cancer, right? So sidereal astrologers or rational astrologers will say perhaps that in our day and age, because the sun is not aligned to the crab constellation at this time, but rather to the twins constellation, they say we should call that Gemini, that that's not arbitrary because it's about the constellations. Well, I like to ask the astronomers this, why don't you call it the Tropic of Gemini then? And they go, what are you talking about? Because for some reason, this is the very real, elegant, beautiful astronomy that the astronomers seem to be either forgetting or choosing to ignore so that they can defend their attacks of astrology. Tropical Cancer, Tropic of Cancer, the northern point of the ecliptic. It is Earth's rotational axis, which again, I'm fond of calling the spine of Gaia, that defines the true directions. Maybe the world tree would be an older name and one that's been utilized by many cultures throughout time. Now, when North and South are defined, so are East and West. That's maybe more of a confusing thing. This is just showing that we do have a star on the tree in our day and age, Polaris, pole star, North star. Why would I say East and West are a little bit more confusing? Well, the Northern pole, as I hope I've shown, is always leaning in every moment's time towards zero degrees Cancer, which I show here at the Tropic of Cancer. And here the South pole is always leaning every moment forever in no way arbitrary towards the South point zero degrees tropical Capricorn, right? At the Tropic of Capricorn, the ecliptic always passes through the earth, depending no matter where she is in her daily spin through the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. But I can also say that those are the North and South signs. Now, East and West, you know, it's a little bit <laughs> harder to see you know, from Rio de Janeiro and, oh, I don't know, Kenya at the same time, north is north up towards North Pole and south is south towards the South Pole. Why would I, could, why could I say up and down? I mean, that seems very Northern hemispheric. Well, the truth is, and this is a tale for another time, the earth is moving north through space because the sun is. North, earth north through space towards Vega. Anyway, while it's true that North Pole is the same direction from Kenya than it is from Rio de Janeiro, when you're looking east from Kenya, right, you're looking at a very different place in the heavens than you are from Rio, right? Kenya is many hours ahead as the earth spins. So when the sun rises in Kenya, it's still nighttime in Rio, right? I should say Kenya in Brazil. Um, but there are directions that we can measure from the center of Earth. And the truth is, and this seems odd, we measure planetary position, not from the surface of the Earth, where we live and breathe and witness the heavenly happenings, but rather from the center of Earth, 
planets and the signs from the center of the earth, planets and the houses from the surface of the earth. So Kenya and Brazil, and I should say Rio because Brazil is so giant, will feature the planets in different houses at any moment of time, but they will be in the same signs. Now, constellations, sidereal, tropical signs, either way, this is measured from the center of the earth. And the beautiful thing about that is while the above is particular surface, different cultures, cuisines, time of day, planets and the houses, right? The center is the one place where all earthlings are always connected. The whole, the below, the heart of our planet, like to say the heart of Gaia. And since the directions are defined by Gaia's spine, where there's a north and there's a south, based upon her rotation from the center of the earth where we are all one, there is also an east and a west. The other cardinal directions which are aligned in no arbitrary way to the cardinal cusps of the tropical signs. Zero degrees tropical Aries is always and forever due east of the center of earth where we are all connected and zero degrees tropical Libra is always due west. What does the Libra glyph look like to you? Scales? Let's continue with this solar serpent journeying through declination. The northernmost point here at zero degrees tropical Cancer and then Cancer, Leo and Virgo are all northern declination signs. They're all northern signs when the sun or any planet is in those signs, it rises north of due east and sets north of due west. I should say always for the sun because for the planets, they might be out of bounds or um, latitude brings about other considerations, but let's not get too technical here. So let's just speak about the sun. The sun's journey through Cancer, Leo and Virgo is northern, but getting further or less north, coming back towards the south to the next crossing point of the ecliptic in the equator, where the sun passes over the equator, moving in the southerly direction. And it is a point, this is the sun's zero degrees Libra ingress, September equinox, autumnal equinox for northern hemisphere, falling, do you see the falling? Vernal or spring equinox for the southern, hemisphere where the sun is now coming into southern declinations and so therefore getting higher in the southern hemisphere sky as it's getting lower in the northern hemisphere sky. But one thing both hemispheres share is that that zero degrees tropical Libra point is due west of the center of earth where we are all connected. Can you see why we use the image of a setting sun for the Libra glyph, because that energy of the setting sun is the most beautiful expression of the westerly direction. The place where, because Earth's daily rotation is from the west to the east, our witness of that daily motion is the heavens rising in the east and resting in the west. And a moon set and a Jupiter Saturn set, beautiful things to behold, but it is the setting sun that takes us from day to night, right? On a yearly point of view, that's very much akin to an autumnal equinox experience moving from longer days to longer nights. So there is something in that sense tied to the Northern Hemisphere seasonal experience. And yet, as I'm clearly showing here, I hope for the entire globe, zero degrees tropical Libra is due west. And the energetic essence of the westerly direction is expressed most beautifully by the setting sun, which I clearly see in the Libra glyph. And I hope you do too. So now we enter southern declination signs, the solar snake takes us south of the celestial equator. Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius are southern declination increasing south signs. 
we get to zero degrees tropical Capricorn, the south point, and when the sun ingresses tropical Capricorn, it's shining somewhere on earth directly at the zenith above the head of the Tropic of Capricorn. Not the Tropic of Sagittarius, even though in our day and age, that zero degrees tropical Capricorn sun is aligned to the constellation of the archer, but tropical Capricorn because Tropic of Capricorn. <laughs> and the same thing, the Tropicos, Greek, for turn around. You see that in the Cancer glyph, as I described before. And in the Capricorn glyph, I love this older version because you can see the sun now coming back north to cross the equator once again, which happens when we move through these southern declination signs that are decreasing south or moving towards the north. And those are Capricorn, the goat that begins the climb, Aquarius and Pisces, which brings us to the next Passover point. The sun at zero degrees, tropical Aries, a declination of zero, because this is where the ecliptic passes over the equator. This is where the plane of the annual motion passes over the plane of the daily motion from the south to the north. This is the northern crossing of the ecliptic. Sorry, this is the northern crossing of the equator by the ecliptic. Now that is expressed by the sun at March equinox time, but it's not a yearly thing. The sun is a yearly thing. The moon crosses over the equator at that point of the zodiac every month. Jupiter does every about 12 years, Saturn about every 29 and a half years. This point that we describe as zero degrees tropical Aries. And some astronomers call that like the zero point because that's where you begin the measurement that is called celestial longitude, the 360 degrees uh, along the ecliptic plane. Or we also begin the measurement of right ascension, the 360 degrees or 24 hours about the celestial equator. Why? not in any way arbitrary, maybe a Northern Hemispheric thing. Many have called this like the resurrection as far as the annual experience of the sun. Why? Because for the Northern Hemisphere experience, this is when at March equinox, where for Northern Hemisphere, it's a vernal or spring equinox, the sun is springing up above the celestial equator and because this is the time of year when light overcomes night. So you'll often hear astronomers, sorry, astrologers and tropical astrologers, especially kind of seasonal based tropical astrologers describing why we begin the tropical zodiac with zero degrees Aries, because that's when light overcomes night. Well, that's completely a Northern hemispheric transmission as are statements like the sun rules Leo because it's the hottest time of the year. Tell that to somebody who lives in Brazil. Now, what is true of the tropical zodiac for everywhere on the globe, it is like so many shamanic systems of wisdom traditions throughout the ages and places, the tropical zodiac is a system based upon the energies of the cardinal directions. The tropical zodiac, and this is in no way arbitrary, is a directional phenomena. Now, why call this so-called zero point, which I prefer to call the east point, because it is due east of the center of the earth, why call it Aries? Because isn't Aries some constellation out there? Isn't that why this is arbitrary? Well, I beg to differ. And I will say as I do, that this is contrary to the accepted 
history of the zodiac, though I will say it's a rather obscure thing. Because what we're taught is that the Babylonians first found their way through like a 19 sign ecliptic zodiac and finally to a 12 sign zodiac to agree with the months of their calendar. An issue there is that the Babylonian calendar basically does 354 days because it's about 12, 29 and a half day months. That's like the lunar year. And then you add leap months here and there. And it's kind of a confusing thing, but importantly, you can't track a monthly passage of the moon in regards to 12 equal signs because a lunar year or a silver year is defined by 12 lunations is 11 days shy about of a golden year or a solar year defined by Earth's orbit of the sun. There's some significant challenges there, but I'm going too far afield once again. Importantly, I will say this, most astrologers believe, and maybe it's true, that the Babylonians had laid out this 12 sign sidereal zodiac of the heaven zodiac, star-based zodiac, constellational based zodiac, that's challenging. Again, they do not in any way divide the ecliptic plane into 12 equal slices. But most astrologers teach and believe that the constellations define the zodiac initially and then in Greece or perhaps Alexandria in Egypt, there's a new cosmology was born that was tropical astrology that we should define rather the signs of the zodiac to these cardinal points, to these points of tropical earth-based astronomy rather than heavenly star-based astronomy. But that at that time, around the time of Christ, Ptolemy 150 years before the, the two sidereal and tropical actually aligned more like 200, 50 AD, which is interestingly around the time um, when the Council of Nicaea laid out a lot of the calendrical considerations that are, you know, the calendar utilized by most beings on earth today. But importantly, what I will say is that I have a feeling as expressed earlier that Gemini is called the twins, not because that constellation, which was around that space of the tropical zodiac back in that day, looks like twins. And it does. It's one of the only constellations that looks anything like its associated glyph that we employ today as astrologers. But rather because at solstice time, we really get to see that Gemini sign of the sun having moved either six months higher in your sky and now we start going six months down right or the opposite depending on which hemisphere you're looking for which solstice we're speaking about and also if you put a stick in the ground what you're going to notice is the highest midday sun summer solstice so june solstice in the northern hemisphere casts the shortest midday shadow and that throughout the course of the year if you look at the midday sun at the midheaven the shadow gets longer for six months and gets shorter for six months, the Gemini glyph. As I expressed before, I believe the Cancer glyph is showing us the sun dance on the horizon, six months north and six months south, stopping at the solstice points, the tropicos, to turn around. And I can show you all the glyphs, but I today I want to show you just one more, which was the birth of my feeling that it wasn't the constellation called Ram aligned to the east point at the time that encouraged this new thing of tropical astrology to define the cusp of the eastern sign as zero degrees tropical Aries. I feel because what I'm about to show you is always true of our experience of the East, if we get away from these small screens of the computer and out to the big screen of the living sky, I feel it is the motion that the Eastern sky always describes that encouraged the originators of the zodiacs, whether sidereal of the heavens or tropical of the earth, 
I believe it is the eastern motion of the sky that encouraged the astronomers who were the astrologers to associate the eastern sign with the ram. Okay, but let's talk first about the sun passing over the equator at March equinox time when the sun is on the cross of the ecliptic and the equator. Now, what are the associated holidays from two, I should say, religious ceremonial days with two of the very popular religions today? And it is one is Easter, right? Where we honor the sun on the cross, Christ on the crucifix, right? Well, if like many solar traditions, this, that sun who called himself the sun is actually the sun in our sky, the cross would be the cross of the equator and the ecliptic. Now, of course, Easter is not aligned to March equinox by day, but it is the Sunday after the full moon after the March equinox. So it is defined at least on an annual perspective by the sun on this cross. Christ, we're told, was crucified at Passover. Well, this is the sun passing over the equator. And if you know the story of Passover, this was at the beginning of Exodus, and the Jews were told to paint the blood of a ram above their doors so that their houses would be passed over at night by the angels of death who would take the firstborn from any house that did not have ram's blood above the door. Well, I argue that this east point is the door of the zodiac and the ram's blood because of Aries, the ram, which I would suggest, not because that constellation looks like a ram, it kind of looks like the chauffeur, the ram's horn that's blown to announce the newborn moon at the beginning of every solely lunar month. But what I found one night sitting at the house of the sun, Haleakala in Maui. And it's easier to see there than it is in Seattle where I was living at the time because it's much closer to the equator. But I gave myself this night to the east and just sat and watched what the eastern sky does. And this is what I saw. Stars rising south of east move to the south. Stars rising north of east moved to the north, and like the horns of a ram, then they hooked back around, curled back around to set in the west. And while this is a Stellarium astronomy software animation that I created to show you that Aries glyph of the eastern sky from the equator, if you are, as I am, 38 degrees north of the equator here in the Bay Area of California, the same latitude as Athens, Greece, the same motion is seen, but you have to lean those ram's horns 38 degrees towards the midheaven, which for us in the northern hemisphere, north of the Tropic of Cancer, is the direction south. If you look at the constellation, called Pisces, I prefer to say the fishes, doesn't it look more like that Aries glyph? And if you go back to the legend of when those two fishes were tied together, it was a time when that constellation was aligned to the east point and was rising just like that on the eastern horizon. So I, it's my feeling that that's when they tied those fishes together to reflect this motion that the eastern sky always does. And this is the most important thing I've been saying, and I'll try to say it most clearly as I end here. I do not feel that Aries was arbitrarily aligned to this very real astronomical 
east point of the tropical zodiac of the earthly zodiac. I don't think it was arbitrary aligned because at the time the Aries constellation rose in the east. Rather, I feel that the whole concept of the eastern sign being described by the ram has to do with the ram horn rising of the eastern sky, which is true every day of the year, every year for all time, because the eastern motion is the fountain of youth that like a ram's horns curls back around to set in the west. And the eastern motion, simply watch a sunrise to remember this is true, describes new beginnings. So Easter, right? We have these symbols of fertility, eggs and bunnies, right? Which goes back to well before Christ, once called Wester, associated with Oeste. That's the goddess of the dawn, the goddess of the east. Her name means east. And you can hear it right here. East Ur. Because at that time, the sun is east from the center of the earth, and east is the place of new beginnings. And this is why, my friends, it makes sense for many mundane astrologers, as we do, to describe, depending on where you are and what signs on the rise, and there's lots of amazing rules, but to describe the sun's tropical Aries ingress as the beginning of the astrological year, because that's the time when the sun is due east of the center of the earth, and that this is why we can also describe this image, this whole sign zodiac with zero Aries, zero tropical Aries on the left as the so-called natural zodiac, because that point is, and in no arbitrary way, every moment of every day, of every month, of every year, forever, due east of the center of earth. This is also why tracing that east point, perhaps through the constellations or perhaps through the sidereal signs, like two 12 teethed wheels, will describe to us the turning of the ages. So come, some can say we're in the age of Pisces, this is 2020, because the east point points to the constellation of the fish. Some will say we shift into the age of Aquarius when that east point precesses to the last degree and minute of sidereal Aquarius, or some will say not until that east point gets to a star of the constellation of the water bearer. The divisions of the constellations, pretty arbitrary, especially if you want to divide them into 12 equal signs because they vary significantly in size. The sidereal zodiac, as we saw earlier, is configured to this star and 30 degree equal divisions from there, or really it's calibrated to the opposite point of that star and 30 degree divisions from there. The tropical astrology is configured to Earth's cardinal directions, the cardinal cusp of zero degrees tropical Aries due east of the center of Earth forever and 30 degree equal slices from there, which aligns the cusps of the cardinal signs to the cardinal directions. Another time, I hope you'll see my work about the other expressions of very real tropical astronomy that we see in the other glyphs we utilize to depict the signs. But for now, I hope this has brought some clarity as to why the astronomy of the tropical zodiac is in no way arbitrary and why I believe that the constellations were chosen to describe the energies of the directions rather than the tropical signs being described by the constellations that aligned to the directions at that time, but no longer do. 
Thanks for your time here. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. You can find me at GeminiBrett.com. You can find a much longer transmission, which includes a faster trip through what you just saw here, and then goes into why the placements of our time show us that we're in a very significant age, despite the truth that that East Point won't align to sidereal Aquarius for hundreds of years. So check that out. The Sun on the Cross and the Turning of Ages at GeminiBrett.com on the offering page where you'll see lots of other things. And you can also find um, at the schedule page an opportunity to tune into your own signs and your own constellations. Because as much as I'm a tropical astrologer, I honor the heavenly happenings by honoring the constellations and the stars in your chart as well. Because though I'm sure the tropical signs have literally nothing to do with the constellations out there. I am not in any way suggesting that the stars and the constellations do not participate with our energetic experience as earthlings. We must honor the above and the below. And one way astrologers today can see the coming turning of the age is by doing so in honoring the sidereal signs and the tropical signs or the tropical signs and the constellations and stars. See you in space, friends. Love and planets to you.